Hey guys, and welcome to this edition of our camper trailer build. As you can see, things have progressed somewhat since last episode. <laughs> I've done the cladding on both sides um, and I've put the window and the door in on this side. But we'll start with the cladding. I've done it by myself, I haven't had anyone help me. Uh, this side was a lot more difficult than the other side, but we'll go into that in a moment. In the teardrop building community, there's a bit of an argument with regard to uh, laying and gluing a aluminium substrate to a wooden substrate. And there's those that say gluing it is fine, you'll have no issues. There are those that say, oh, we're going to get different rates of uh, expansion and contraction between the timber and the aluminium. My argument is we're cutting out a great big hole for the door we're cutting out another hole for the window at the areas that we could have difficulties with because they're large is this area and this area when you look into the the rates that these things expand and contract it's so minimal that it doesn't matter uh, in my opinion I've also asked a few guys that the Oracle on the uh, Australian teardrop site Reiner, um, he has built a hundred of these things and glued the aluminium on every one of them. And from what I can tell and from what he says, he's never had an issue. I've also got a bit of an issue where the guys that float it can just tap the aluminium and it's you can tell it's loose and I don't like that flapping effect at all. So I've glued it on. And what have I used to glue it on? <laughs> and I've taken the advice of those that know far better than me and originally I thought I was sick of flex and those that know far better than me have said I use a Bostic uh, 2701 or 2700 contact adhesive. It's a sprayable contact adhesive. Uh, the smallest container you can buy it in is a 20 litre container. It'll cost between 150 and 200 bucks depending where you get it from. And it's industrial strength. And I found that out when I've put it on because once it sticks, it's stuck. You get one go and one go only. Um, it's supposed to be sprayed. You can spray it with a fairly large nozzle and you can roller it. And I have done that because it was just an easier thing to do. And with spraying it, in my mind, um, you're going to end up with it everywhere. So I've used a roller to put it on. And to be honest, it's worked out quite well. Um, I found the first coat that you put on basically put a base layer on both because you have to put the contact on the timber and the back side of the composite panel. Um, before I did put it on the composite panel, I gave it a light sand just to take the sheen off the, uh, the back of it. But I found that the, the, the first coat to roll her on is a base coat and then when you put your next coat on, you get a much better coverage. Um, you just then wait for it to have no tack and you put your hand on it and it's like oh this is dry but when the two surfaces are fixed it's stuck rock solid um, to the point where I was cutting out the windows and doors straight away um, really impressive stuff uh, quite good to work with as long as you realize that you can't move it around when I've put the first sheet on I've clamped some bottom braces so I could line up the base of it. Um, when I've put the second sheet on, I not only put the the bottom braces on, but I put uh, a guide at the front too, so I could line up the sheet in three sections before I just pushed it on. Um, and the, the other side turned out perfect. This side I'm probably about half a mil out at one point, which isn't a lot, but when you're trying to do it to the best of your ability, it's like, oh, I'm half a millimeter out, that's no good. But anyway, Let's roll some tape um, and have a look at how it worked.
you can see, when we're using the full size sheets to clad the sides, um, it's best to have someone else to help you. I didn't have that on both occasions and um, it worked out fine. But using the guides, um, especially the third guide, was invaluable because it became a point of tilting it at an angle, pushing the, the bottom in, pushing it forward to the front and then just pushing the whole lot on um, and it worked out perfectly. What would I do differently next time? If I could get a slightly larger panel or size my walls ever so slightly smaller, you could route all the way around them and that would give you a perfect uh, coverage. Um, I've used the, the six by three sheet of ply for my walls and I've used a six by three sheet of the aluminium. So it was basically spot on and apart from the angles, um, there was nothing to trim. So really happy with how that's turned out. Um, I'm really happy with the colour. The roof's going to be a different colour um, and I've still got to put the mud guards back on and paint those. Um, which, which the weird thing is in all this weather, they've got actually gone quite rusty, the mud guards. So there's going to be a bit of sanding and prep before I, I start on that. So if you order mud guards, undercoat them as soon as they come. Now trimming out the windows and doors and the like, I've got to cut out some holes for my tail lights in the back and I've been thinking, oh, do I clad it first and then hole saw the holes in or do I do that hole saw first and then clad it and trim it with the, uh, the router? And the router wins every time in my, my books. Um, and the funny thing is with the router, I started on the back and it was a little bit difficult to use and all of a sudden it just came good and went through everything like butter. Um, I did spray some WD-40 on the, uh, the router blade, um, but it was like, as soon as it warmed up, it was good to go. Um, and the windows and doors and everything, it just routed out straight away. The only thing I will say is that I did try and hold up a, if you see in the footage, I did try and hold up a piece of timber behind the window to stop rubbish getting in. When I routed out the other side of the camper, I actually taped up that piece of ply inside and after I'd cut the hole out, um, it was just taking the rubbish out of that and nothing had all got inside. So that's the best thing in the world to use, I'd, uh, I'd suggest. I'm finding that the garden blower is really good to clean up this stuff. <laughs> it, it just goes everywhere. It, it really does. Um, and it's probably the worst part of the job because you just end up with it all over you. I forgot to wear my safety glasses when I first started and halfway through it's like, oh, I really should be wearing safety glasses with these. I've finished off this side, actually. I've put the lights on, the windows and doors, mainly for my own benefit because I can walk out of my door now into the carport and it's like I have a finished camper nearly. Um, so that's just for my own benefit. But uh, now with the Dometic windows, they do suggest you cork them with your flexible corker of choice. I've used the Sikaflex version. Um, they do have a small gas rubber gasket that compresses against the window. However, just in from that gasket, they have a channel where to fill up with your caulking material. It takes a fair bit of material, so make sure you have a, a new tube. The one thing I didn't realise once I had filled it up with caulking and placed it in the, the wall was that whilst Dometic say that their windows are suitable for 21 millimetres to 40 millimetres walls or whatever, my 21 or 22 millimetre walls uh, need a spacer plate inside for the interior trim. So at the moment I've just put in a couple of pieces of timber so I could pull the, the window back with the interior trim and it should be dry now because I did that last night and so I can take the interior trim up and make up a, a gasket or my spacer plate or whatever. With the door, I've used a mastic tape um, uh, instead of the Sikaflex because those that have built a lot more of these suggest that that's a good thing because you can it remains pliable over its lifetime and even when you do take it off at a later date um, it's still quite pliable. It's sticky as hell and I suppose it needs to be. Now with this door I've put in a couple of screws here at the top just to hold it while I was doing it but I've screwed into the sides of the, um, the frame which is the better option I think. Um, this door I've got is quite good. It does have a, a fly screen 
and it also locks. So really happy with that, and that's from Rhino in, uh, in, in Queensland. The lights, the lights fitted really nicely. The only thing I had was um, with the lights, they are a flush fit to the wall and there's nothing behind them. So I had to route out a little bit on the wall so the wires could sit in so the, uh, the back of the, the lights could fit flush. But it's all working. And I'm really happy with how it's turning out. Um, it's kind of changed it. I'll do a quick walk around, show you the other side, and um, that's about it for this week. Um, Looks like a camper. <laughs> that's it for today, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.